If you were to get a bunch of New Testament theologians together in a room and ask them, who is the uh, least sophisticated theologian of the New Testament authors, uh, I think you could get a pretty strong consensus that it is James. That is at least James' reputation. Uh, the letter of James is viewed as being wisdom literature with all kinds of practical directives, but as not containing very much profound theology. Uh, we know that Luther was very dismissive of James, at least at one point in his career, because James didn't seem to preach the gospel. There didn't seem to be very uh, much weight to James' theology. It seems to be rather theologically thin. Uh, on the other hand, if you were to ask those same theologians, who is the most sophisticated theologian in the New Testament, the, the deepest, most profound writer uh, of the New Testament authors. You might have some who would say Paul, based on Romans and, and other letters of Paul, but I think you'd probably have John as your leading candidate, uh, particularly because of John's gospel, because John's gospel is full of these uh, incredibly profound uh, theological claims. It's, it's full of these incredibly profound statements about uh, about Jesus. Uh, and so it seems like James and John are on opposite ends of that spectrum in terms of theological sophistication. James is very simple, very thin theologically, not very much there that's really profound, whereas John is the deepest, most profound, most sublime of all the New Testament writers, full of these profound and mysterious sayings and, and, a, and a very uh, deep and thick theology. Uh, but what if I made the claim uh, that James, who certainly wrote before John, uh, actually may have influenced the language that John uses in his gospel or even provides something of a one-verse summary of John's gospel? I think that's what we have in James 1.17. Uh, Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. This is what's interesting. This, this is a very overlooked verse in, uh, in James' letter, but I think it's incredibly important to what he's doing theologically, and there, there are all kinds of reasons for that. But what I want to point out here is that the language that James uses here is very much the Johannine vocabulary for the gospel. This is the language of John. I think one of the problems we have with James 1.17 is that we tend to read this in a counter-blessings kind of way. So every good and every perfect gift uh, becomes all the different ways God has blessed us, the way he's blessed his own people, but perhaps unbelievers as well, with things like family and friends and homes and jobs and clothes and money and so forth, all of these kinds of blessings. And certainly those are good gifts that come to us from the Father above, and we ought to be grateful for those things. But I'm not convinced that that is really, or at least primarily, what James has in view. He speaks of this good gift and this perfect gift. Gift is in the singular, this gift that is from above, that has come down from the Father of lights. This is, again, the Johannine vocabulary for the gospel, the Johannine vocabulary for salvation. Uh, James here speaks of a, a gift that comes down. Well, in John chapter 6, we find Jesus talking about the bread of God that has come down from above. Uh, Jesus says, I have come down from heaven. That's how he describes his mission from heaven to earth. Same kind of language James uses. He describes himself as the one who has descended from heaven. Again, you know, that's in John 3, John chapter 6, the bread of God that has come down from heaven. It's there again and again in the gospel. He describes himself as the one who has come from the Father who has been sent from the Father. Uh, he describes himself as the one who has come from above in John chapter 8 with the Pharisees. He says, you are from below, I am from above. So all of this language of from above, coming down, uh, this is language that James is using here, but it becomes the vocabulary of salvation in John's gospel. Even that language of gift uh, in John chapter 4, when Jesus is talking with this Samaritan woman, and she's a little bit confused by him, he says, if you knew the gift of God, and he's clearly talking about himself. So if you ask, what is the good and perfect gift of God? It's Christological. I think it has to be interpreted in a Christological way. The good and perfect gift of the Father that has come down from above is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this is what James ultimately has in view. Uh, he's using what will become known as the Johannine categories when John's Gospel is finally written, but here they are already in James. And I think it shows us that James has been underrated as a theologian. Uh, I think this shows us that James 
understood the gospel right on par with the other apostles. He has the same message of salvation, even uses the same vocabulary. Indeed, it's the most profound vocabulary we have for describing what the Father has done in sending the, the Son into the world to accomplish our salvation.